The African National Congress ANC is the current ruling party in the National Assembly of South Africa. Topic: <inaudible> Origins. As a resistance movement, the ANC was predated by a P of black resistance movements, among them Umkozi Wezentaba, formed in South Africa between 1890 and 1920. The organization was initially founded as the South African Native National Congress on 8 January 1912 by Saul M. S. A. N. E. E. S. Q., Josiah Gumid, John Doob, Pixley Ka Asaka Seem, and Saul Plotya, along with chiefs, people's representatives, and church organizations, and other prominent individuals individuals to bring all Africans together as one people to defend their rights and freedoms, in Bloemfontein, with the aim of fighting for the rights of black South Africans. The organization was renamed the ANC in 1923. The organization, from its inception represented both traditional and modern elements, from tribal chiefs to church and community bodies and educated black professionals, though women were only admitted as affiliate members from 1931 and as full members in 1943. The formation of the ANC Youth League in 1944 by Anton Lembede heralded a new generation committed to building nonviolent mass action against the legal underpinnings of the white minority's supremacy. In 1946 the ANC allied with the South African Communist Party in assisting in the formation of the South African Mine Workers Union. After the miners' strike became a general strike, the ANC's President General Alfred Bidini Zuma, along with delegates of the South African Indian Congress, attended the 1946 session of the United Nations General Assembly where the treatment of Indians in South Africa was raised by the Government of India. Together, they raised the issue of the police brutality against the miners' strike and the wider struggle for equality in South Africa. The ANC also worked with the Natal Indian Congress and Transvaal Indian Congress. Opposition to apartheid The return to power of an Afrikaner-led nationalist government National Party on 4 June 1948 due to an election technicality saw the implementation of its policy of racial segregation, known as apartheid. During the 1950s, non-whites were removed from electoral rolls, residence and mobility laws were tightened and political activities restricted. The successful increase of awareness outside of South Africa achieved in the Indians' movement under the leadership of Gandhi-inspired blacks in South Africa to resist the racism and inequality that they, and all other non-whites, were experiencing. The two racial groups began working together, forcing themselves to accept one another and bash their own personal prejudices against one another. This required effort, education supporting the other race and their achievements, and constantly reminding themselves that they needed one another to combat the oppression they were facing. They began collaborating, even jointly campaigning for their struggle to be managed by the United Nations although in this time, Western society was not practicing equality for all people either. The ANC also found its role model in the initial movement by the Indian political parties. They realized that they would need a fervent leader, like Gandhi was for the Indians, who was, in the words of Nelson Mandela, "...willing to violate the law and if necessary go to prison for their beliefs as Gandhi had." In 1949 the ANC saw a jump in their membership, which previously lingered around 5,000, and began to establish a firm presence in South African national society. In June 1952, the ANC joined with other anti apartheid organizations in a defiance campaign against the restriction of political, labor, and residential rights, during which protesters deliberately violated oppressive laws, following the example of Mahatma Gandhi's passive resistance in KwaZulu Natal and in India. The campaign was called off in April 1953 after new laws prohibiting protest meetings were passed. In June 1955 the Congress of the People, organized by the ANC and Indian, colored and white organizations at Cliptown near Johannesburg, adopted the Freedom Charter, henceforth the fundamental document of the anti-apartheid struggle with its demand for equal rights for all regardless of race. As opposition to the regime's policies continued, 156 leading members of the ANC and allied organizations were arrested in 1956. The resulting treason trial ended with their acquittal five years later. The ANC first called for an academic boycott of South Africa in protest of its apartheid policies in 1958 in Ghana. 
The call was repeated the following year in London. In 1959, a number of members broke away from the ANC because they objected to the ANC's reorientation from African nationalist policies. They formed the rival Pan Africanist Congress, PAC, led by Robert Sobukwe. Protest and banning The ANC planned a campaign against the pass laws, which required blacks to carry an identity card at all times to justify their presence in white areas, to begin on 31 March 1960. The PAC pre empted the ANC by holding unarmed protests ten days earlier, during which 69 protesters were killed and 180 injured by police fire in what became known as the Sharpeville Massacre. In the aftermath of the tragedy, both organizations were banned from political activity. International opposition to the regime increased throughout the 1950s and 1960s, fueled by the growing number of newly independent nations, the anti-apartheid movement in Britain and the civil rights movement in the United States. In 1960, the leader of the ANC, Albert Luthuli, won the Nobel Peace Prize, a feat that would be repeated in 1993 by the next leader of the ANC, Nelson Mandela, and F. W. de Klerk jointly, for their actions in helping to negotiate peaceful transition after Mandela's release from prison, which was a great step towards better rights for blacks. <laughs> Violent political resistance Following the Sharpeville massacre in 1960, the ANC leadership concluded that the methods of non-violence such as those utilized by Gandhi against the British Empire during their colonization of India were not suitable against the apartheid system. A military wing was formed in 1961, called Umkanto we Sizwe MK, meaning, Spear of the Nation, with Mandela as its first leader. MK operations during the 1960s primarily involved targeting and sabotaging government facilities. Mandela was arrested in 1962, convicted of sabotage in 1964 and sentenced to life imprisonment on Robben Island, along with Sisulu and other ANC leaders after the Rivonia trial. During the 1970s and 1980s the ANC leadership in exile under Oliver Tombo made the decision to target apartheid government leadership, command and control, secret police, and military industrial complex assets and personnel in decapitation strikes, targeted killings, and guerrilla actions such as bomb explosions in facilities frequented by military and government personnel. A number of civilians were also killed in these attacks. Examples of these include the Amanzimtoti bombing, the Stirland bomb in Pretoria, the Wimpy bomb in Pretoria, the Juicy Lucy bomb in Pretoria and the Magoos Bar bombing in Durban. ANC acts of sabotage aimed at government institutions included the bombing of the Johannesburg Magistrates Court, the attack on the Coburg nuclear power station, the rocket attack on Vortrekkerhugti in Pretoria, and the 1983 Church Street bombing in Pretoria, which killed 16 and wounded 130. The ANC was classified as a terrorist organization by the South African government and by some Western countries including the United States of America and the United Kingdom. Nevertheless, the ANC had a London office from 1978 to 1994 at 28 Pendant Street in Islington, North London, now marked with a plaque. During this period, the South African military engaged in a number of raids and bombings on ANC bases in Botswana, Mozambique, Lesotho and Swaziland. Dulce September, a member of the ANC who was investigating the arms trade between France and South Africa was assassinated in Paris in 1988. In the ANC's training camps, the ANC faced allegations that dissident members faced torture, detention without trial and even execution in ANC prison camps. In South Africa, the campaign to make the townships ungovernable led to kangaroo courts and mob executions of opponents and collaborators, often by necklacing. There was violence between the ANC and the Inkatha Freedom Party. For example, between 1985 and 1989, 5,000 civilians were killed in fighting between the two parties. Massacres of each other's supporters include the Shell House Massacre and the Boipatong Massacre. As the years progressed, the African National Congress's attacks, coupled with international pressure and internal dissent, increased in South Africa. The ANC received financial and tactical support from the USSR, which orchestrated military involvement with surrogate Cuban forces through Angola. 
However, the fall of the USSR after 1991 brought an end to its funding of the ANC and also changed the attitude of some Western governments that had previously supported the apartheid regime as an ally against communism. The South African government found itself under increasing internal and external pressure, and this, together with a more conciliatory tone from the ANC, resulted in a change in the political landscape. State President F. W. de Klerk unbanned the ANC and other banned organizations on 2 February 1990, and began peace talks for a negotiated settlement to end apartheid. Coming to power. With the end of apartheid, it was a foregone conclusion that the ANC would not only win the April 1994 general election—the country's first multiracial elections—but do so in a landslide. The only question was whether the ANC would win the two-thirds majority necessary to unilaterally amend the interim constitution. In that election, the ANC, as the dominant partner in a tripartite alliance with the South African Communist Party and the Congress of South African Trade Unions, won a comprehensive victory, winning 62% of the vote just short of a two-thirds majority. The new legislature elected Nelson Mandela as President of South Africa, making him the country's first black chief executive. In KWA Zulu Natal, the ANC maintained an uneasy coalition with the Inkatha Freedom Party after neither party won a majority in the 1994 and 1999 provincial elections. In 2004 the party contested national elections in voluntary coalition with the new National Party NNP, which it effectively absorbed following the NNP's dissolution in 2005. After the 1994 and 1999 elections it ruled seven of the nine provinces, with KWA Zulu Natal under the IFP and the Western Cape Province under the NNP. As of 2004, it gained both the Western Cape and KWA Zulu Natal after a combination of the NNP's electoral base being eroded by the DA and a poor showing by the IFP. Topic signs of strain By 2001 the tripartite alliance between the ANC, Kasatu and SACP began showing signs of strain as the ANC moved to more liberal economic policies than its alliance partners were comfortable with. The focus for dissent was the GEAR program, an initialism for growth, employment and redistribution. In late 2004 this was again thrown into sharp relief by Zuelinzima Vavi of Kasatu protesting the ANC's policy of quiet diplomacy towards the worsening conditions in Zimbabwe, as well as black economic empowerment, which he complained benefits a favored few in the black elite and not the masses. As of 2005 the alliance was facing a crisis as Jacob Zuma, who was fired from his position as deputy president of South Africa by Thabo Mbeki, faced corruption charges. Complicating the situation was the fact that Zuma remained deputy president of the ANC, and maintained a strong following amongst many ANC supporters, and the ANC's alliance partners. In October 2005, top officials in the National Intelligence Agency, who were Zuma supporters, were suspended for illegally spying on an Mbeki supporter, Sake Makazoma, amid allegations that ANC supporters were using their positions within organs of state to spy on, and discredit each other. In December 2005, Zuma was charged with rape and his position as deputy president of the ANC was suspended. Jacob Zuma was acquitted of the rape charges, and was reinstated as deputy president of the organization. A battle for leadership of the ANC followed, culminating at the party's national conference in Palakwane 16-20 December 2007, where both Jacob Zuma and Thabo Mbeki were nominated for the position of president. On 18 December 2007, Jacob Zuma was elected president of the ANC at the ANC conference in Palakwane. Jacob Zuma was replaced as ANC president by Cyril Ramaphosa at the 2017 ANC national conference. The ANC also faced sometimes violent protests in townships over perceived poor service delivery, as well as internal disputes. As local government elections approached in 2006, the ANC Wabenzi are now commonly considered to be more concerned with the spoils of power, such as BMWs, whiskey, and Italian clothes, than they are with furthering the development of the people. Topic: <laughs> Leaders of the ANC. Presidents of the ANC 
1912–1917 John Langelibelele Dube 1917–1924 Sefako Mapogo Magatho 1924–1927 Zacharias Richard Mahabane 1881–1971 1927 to 1930 Josiah Shangana Gumid 1870 to 1947 1930 to 1936 Pixley Ka Asaka Seem 1882 to 1951 1937 to 1940 Zacharias Richard Mahabane 1881 to 1971 1940 to 1949 Alfred Bidini Zuma 1890 to 1962 1949 to 1952 James Seba Maroka 1891 to 1985 1952 to 1967 Albert John Lutuli 1898 to 1967 1967 to 1991 Oliver Reginald Tombo 1917 to 1993 1991 to 1997 Nelson Rolly Mandela 1918 to 2013 1997 to 2007 Tabo M Vuyawa Mbeki 1942 2007 to 2017 Jacob Gedliyelaki Sazuma 1942 2017 Madamela Cyril Ramaphosa Topic <laughs> Deputy Presidents of the ANC 1912 to 1936 Walter Rubasana 1952 to 1958 Nelson Rolly Mandela 1958 to 1985 Oliver Reginald Tombo 1985 to 1991 Nelson Rolly Mandela 1991 to 1994 Walter Max Uliot Sisulu 1994 to 1997 Tabo M Vuyelwa Mbeki 1997 to 2007 Jacob Gedliyelaki Zuma 2007 to 2012 Kegelima Petrus Matlante 2012 to 2017 Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa 2017 David Mabuza Topic <laughs> Secretaries General of the ANC 1912 to 1915 Solomon Shakisho Saul Platya 1915 to 1917 Saul MSANE 1917 to 1919 RV Salope Tema 1919 to 1923 HL Budim Bell 1923 to 1927 TD Mwali Skoda 1927 to 1930 EJ Kyle 1930 to 1936 Elijah Mdoloma 1936 to 1949 James Arthur Kalata 1949 to 1955 Walter Max Uliot Sisulu 1955 to 1958 Oliver Reginald Tombo 1958 to 1969 Philemon Pierce Dumasile Duma Nakwe 1969 to 1991 Alfred Bafathusholo NZO 1991 to 1997 Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa 1997 to 2007 Kegelima Petrus Matlante 2007 to 2017 G Weed Mantishi 2017 Ace Magashul Topic other key figures in ANC history 1948–1994, Joe Slovo, Tatumkulu Africa, Robert Sobukwe, Raymond M. H. Laba, Thomas N. Kobe, Dulce September, Chris Haney, Ahmed Kathrada, Govan Mbeki and Penwell Maduna Since 1994, Sidney Mufamadi See also Africa Hinterland Arms Smuggling Operation Anti-Apartheid Movement Radio Freedom Shell House Massacre Henri Curiel <laughs>